Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking to you about Between Two Cities. But before we do, let's get into our Pounds and Enches segment. This is where we talk about what Ryan and I are trying to do to achieve better health in our lives. And right now what I'm doing is planning out 2020. So for the past um, two years, this will be my third year, I actually make a plan for the whole year for myself. I write it all down, I put notes in my calendar, things like that. And um, it's worked out really well. It's given me direction. It's given me something to fall back on when I start floundering. And one of the things that is a little different than New Year's resolutions and creating a plan for yourself is two things. One, I create, um, if I have a goal, I create what my current reality is, what is actually happening, and then what I want. And I have to create a pathway to get from my current reality to where I want. And then I also put it in four times a year where I revisit all of this to make, to just kind of update as I need to revise if something changed or, or to see how awesome I'm progressing because sometimes I am progressing and it's great. So I just love this. I really, really like planning out my year like that. Yeah, resolutions tend to get um, dropped within what, like a month is it or less? Yeah, I don't I don't think it makes even the whole 31 days, yeah. Yeah, so a plan is, is, is really cool. All right, well enough talking about life planning, let's talk about city planning. Uh, we're gonna talk about Between Two Cities. Now, to be honest, when I first heard this game title, I thought it was somehow a reference to uh, A Tale of Two Cities, um, some kind of like <laughs> novel crossover book, and I was really intrigued by that, but instead I got a whole different thing, where you were literally building a city, uh, or building two cities, you're sitting between two cities that you're trying to build. So uh, let's show you what that might look like. In between two cities, you are tasked with building two cities, and you're going to build them with the cooperation of the people that you're sitting next to. So we've got one city that we're working on over here with the person to our left, another one over here with the person that we're sitting to our right. We are going to build an exact 4x4 four four grid, and we're going to draft some tiles. The first thing I'll do is I'll show you the different kinds of tiles, and then we'll show you how to build a city with those tiles. The first kind of tile that we're going to talk about is these shops. These score based off of how many you have of them in a straight row, either horizontally or vertically. One by themselves is only worth two points, but five if you have two of them, ten for three, or four for sixteen. So the more you have in a straight line, the more points they're worth. The next kind of tile that we're going to talk about is the parks. Now these score based off of how many they have kind of clustered together. If you have one of them by itself, it's worth two points. You know, two of them is worth eight, three is worth twelve, and then it kind of diminishes from there and you only get one point for each additional after three. The next tile that we're going to talk about is the taverns. Now the taverns, there are four of them, so that you can see the kind of the symbols in the top left there. If you manage to get a full set of you know one of each of those symbols, it's worth 17 points. These do not have to be touching in any way, and based off of how many you get of them, that's how many points you get. For instance, if you got two of two different kinds, it'd be worth a set of four and a set of four. Even though you have four in your city, it does not mean it's worth 17 points. The next kind of tile is the offices. The offices, that you get more and more points based off of how many you have in the city. These, again, do not have to be touching. They can be anywhere in your whole city. Uh, if you have one, it's worth one. All the way up to six is worth 21 points. Also, you get one additional point as kind of in that corner there for each red that your, your blues are touching. Now, the factories, generally speaking, are worth two points per factory in your tile. However, if you are the person who has the most factories in your whole city, then yours are worth four per tile. And in second place is worth three per tile. The last kind of tile I want to talk about is the houses. Now they are worth anywhere from one to five points based off of what other things that's in that city. So if you have a fully well-rounded city with each of those types of things, it's going to be worth five points. But if you only have, you know, let's say three of the five, they're only worth three points. Additionally, if it's next to, touching exactly next to a factory, that then the house, no matter what it should be worth, becomes only worth one point. Because who wants to have their house next to a factory? Now, how are we going to build this city? So at the beginning of each turn, you're going to get a hand of tiles. And you're going to choose one of them to go to the city to your left, one of them to the city on your right. They have to be oriented with that symbol in the top left and the kind of the scoring on the bottom there. You can kind of discuss with your neighbors beforehand what you're going to place, but ultimately you're going to reveal and place your tiles at the same time. So some other tiles are going to get added by, by the people next to you. Then you take the, the tiles that are left over, and you're going to place them over there. You're going to get the new hand of cards from the person from the other side of you, and you're going to do it again. After everyone at the table has placed three tiles to each one of their neighboring cities, then you get the double tiles. You're going to get a hand of three of those, and you're going to place, again, same thing, one over here, one over here, 
and discard the other. You're going to simultaneously reveal those and place those along with your neighbors. And then you go into the third and final round where you go back to the smaller tiles. So between each player is going to be a 4x4 four four grid representing that city. So then you're going to take turns scoring the city on your score track. You're going to have two scores, one for each of your cities that you're connected to, but ultimately the only one that counts is the one that has the lower score. So really you need to try to build up both cities equally, so that way, no matter what, you're going to get a lot of points. I really enjoyed the cooperation about this game that you have to have with the people sitting next to you. That kind of that social element of you want to do what's best for your cities, but at the same time you want to make sure that both cities are growing equally and you have to get the cooperation from the people next to you. So that, that kind of social dynamic of the game worked really well. I like how in the second round you have those double tiles and you have to use the orientation that it is. So um, it is going to be horizontal or vertical. You can't switch them. And I liked the challenge of that. And when you got that and you're already building something and how how you build it has limited where you can even place this double tile. And I, I really enjoy the decision making. I thought the tiles themselves made a lot of sense uh, as far as you know, what they all did and how they scored. I thought that like the houses, for instance, you know, the, the more things you had to do in your town and the more jobs are provided, all that kind of stuff, uh, the more points they're worth. But if your house is directly next to a factory, uh, it's only worth one point. So I thought those little elements worked really well together. Yeah, you can have one big park, but it's better to have three medium parks. <laughs> Just like in a real town. <laughs> All right. Also, I think the three, you know it says three to seven players in the box, um, but all three, all the player counts, it, it plays exactly the same. You're just yeah. playing between two people, so it doesn't really add to the player time at all. And also, um, no matter what, it, you get that same feeling no matter how many players you're playing with. I thought that was a really clever design. So since 50% of the games that I play are two-player with Ryan, um, we did play this two-player, and it was fine, and it was good. I just thought that two-player took away the uniqueness of this game, um, that social interaction that you have with the players, and, I mean, it's fine, it plays fine, but it took away what may between two cities, between two cities. Yeah, um, but I gotta say, this was a lot of fun to play. Um, when you get to those higher player count games, you're either looking usually at... Uh, a social deduction game, or a party game, or Seven Wonders. <laughs> seven <laughs> Wonders. So it was nice to have another option to play at those higher player counts that, that worked as you know a strategy game. Yeah, this was fun and I enjoyed it. I like, um, like Ryan said, the fact that three to seven plays the same amount of time and you still get um, a non-party game game. So that's really fun and I and I agree with everything Ryan said. I do want to mention that. Um, I know that in a lot of cooperative games, you can get um, the you can get quarterbacked <laughs> in it. And quarterbacked or alpha gamed. Alpha al game, alpha yeah. And not that that happens to the full extent as it would in a cooperative game. This I can see this happening, and I have seen this happen with this game, where you almost don't have any control about what's happening to either side because of the people bo to both sides of you, and that can be a little frustrating. Um, but you're also choosing the tiles that you're passing to these people, so you do have a little bit of control there as well. But I just wanted to note that, that if that um, frustrates you, just be wary of it. But if not, if you like the challenge of playing with challenging people, you're going to like this game. All right, well, that is our thoughts on Between Two Cities. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our vi upcoming videos. And also, we have a contest cup coming up, so you don't want to miss out on any of those details. You can also find us on Facebook at Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. We are on Twitter at Ryan and Bethany one. We are on Instagram at Ryan and Bethany. We also have a blog on BoardGameGeek.com. It's called Pounds and Inches, where we talk a little bit more about our health journey and what's going on there. All right, well, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.